Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, May 6th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Steve Hellwagon. Steve, you know it's the offseason when this is the main topic, but uh, hey, let's let's give it a shot. Uh, this is a good topic that everybody's interested in, not just Ohio State fans, but college football fans across the nation. Will Urban Meyer coach again? And we don't know the answer uh, for sure. We can give our opinions. Do you think he will be a head coach in college football again, Steve? Well, I think there's only a select group of schools that he would be interested in. I think you have to start with that. What do we have? 130 in Division One, And so I don't think North Texas is somewhere where he's going to be the head coach. But I think if one of the top three or four or five programs out there came after him and made him a great offer and also uh, you know, was culturally a right fit for him in terms of geography – and everything else and recruiting base and, and everything that goes with it, I would never rule it out. Um, I think that obviously uh, his health situation may dictate uh, what he can and can't do if they're able to come up with some way to alleviate some of the issues he had last season with uh, the arachnoid cyst and the headaches and everything that's cart kind of part and parcel of that. Uh, I think it's kind of hard for me to see him taking a job if he still is experiencing these kind of stress-related uh, issues that really popped up last season. So I would never rule it out. I think the popular uh, place that everyone keeps pointing to is USC. If uh, Clay Helton can't get that situation figured out and turned around this year, and he's had some good teams there, but he, he just has never – um, I guess they did win the Pac-12 the year they played Ohio State uh, in the bowl game down in Dallas and, uh, you know, just has never had that one kind of breakthrough year. So, uh, you know, you, you have people, I think Reggie Bush was quoted as saying he's going to, he and Matt Leonard are going to work on uh, Urban Meyer when they're working with him on the Fox set this year. And, uh, you know, it worked for Chris Spielman that one year at ESPN. So, what, uh, you know, who knows? We'll see. But it would take a very special situation. And, and we just honestly aren't privy to his health situation either to know whether that's uh, going to work out or not. Yeah, that's what I was going to get at. That's the big that's the big question. And, you know, he's already saying he's feeling better. I'm just going to give my gut feeling. I do think he will coach again. And I wouldn't bet a dime on it but if i had to bet either way a dime i would bet that he you know that he will coach again um and you're right usc seems to be um the one name that keeps popping up it makes a lot of sense if you're usc because clay helton i'm surprised he still even is there to be honest with you um and this just feels like his last year so they're going to be in for a search i don't know if urban would be interested in that job or if he wants to sit out for a few more years um i want you to address that and, and the one thing that the, the problem I could never root for USC, I don't think. Maybe maybe if Urban was there. But here's the big problem if you're an Ohio State fan. If you're like, oh, who cares? Here's the problem. If Urban Meyer coaches again, he is going to take Mickey Marotti and Mark Pantone with him, in my opinion. And I know Mickey Marotti just signed this brand-new contract, makes him the second-highest paid strength coach in the country. With bonuses, he can get close to a million dollars a year, and he deserves every penny of it. But still, he's Urban's guy. And he can get out of that contract, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. So that's the big problem I see, Steve. People are like, why do you guys even care? That would be, that would be the problem. I think maybe I'm wrong. If Urban does coach again, Marotti and Pantone are his boys. He would be on they, – they would be on his staff, in my opinion. Yeah, it probably goes even deeper than those two guys. Uh, Brian Voltolini was also one of the guys he brought from Florida as a director of operations and maybe even a few more of the guys that aren't necessarily ingrained as Ohio State people. Um, you know, I guess uh, time will tell if that ever comes to pass. He left a great machinery in place for Ryan Day with all of those guys who are day-to-day -day operations type guys in terms of strength and conditioning and recruiting and operations and everything else that kind of goes with it. So uh, I think that you look at it and you just say, hey, um, it's going to be what it's going to be. And, and if and when that day comes, uh, Ryan Day will just have to replace those people with, with competent people. Uh, they have their allegiance to Urban Meyer. He put them in those jobs. And, 
you know, the potential is that uh, he's going to go off and, and build an empire someplace else. And uh, that's entirely possible. He brought the Florida guys with him to Ohio State. And if he goes somewhere else, it would be my full expectation that most, if not all of them, go with him wherever the next stop is. What about the possibility that Ryan Day kicks some serious ass and he, um, you know, stays at Ohio State a decent amount of time, four or five years, and then he has just an NFL job that he just can't turn down. He maybe he's turned down NFL jobs before, head coaching jobs that he just didn't, you know, didn't like the situation. But he gets one he just can't pass up, uh, NFL head coaching job, something like that, a dream scenario. <laughs> Do you think there's a possibility Urban Meyer could come back to Ohio State and coach? Oh, man, that's crazy talk. Uh, yeah. Again, offseason. Off yeah, it is the offseason. Again, I think this is all predicated on on his health. And is he able to get mm. back uh, 100% and feeling good and knowing that when uh, there are tough situations and, and difficult uh, things that are going to arise, is he going to be healthy enough to be able to rise to the occasion and, and uh, do his job? I guess in those uh, situations, I don't think that was necessarily the case this past season uh, with what we were able to ascertain and what we saw on the sideline week in and week out. So, you know, come back to Ohio State as the head coach. That's interesting. I can't imagine an Ohio State coach would leave for an NFL job. I mean, I guess if it was the Patriots or, you know, some some franchise that has this, uh, again, this machinery in place to where you're going to be in the Super Bowl, you know, two out of every five years and, and have a, a realistic chance to win it. Um, like, you you're, know. like you're talking about your Cleveland Browns, right? Yeah, the Cleveland Browns would be a perfect spot. I don't know. I, 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 I just don't see a lot. Of, I mean, I guess Jim Harbaugh with his experience as an NFL head coach, would be probably more of a candidate to go back there. Uh, Ryan Day, as you mentioned, as an assistant coach, was an assistant coach at the NFL level, and and maybe that's in his idea one day is to be an NFL head coach again. But being the head coach at Ohio State is uh, got to be one of the plum jobs in the profession, and uh, you know pays pretty well, especially if you win. So I I have a hard time seeing that, but again. You don't have to recruit at the NFL level, so that's uh, an important part of the whole thing as well. Yeah, and I've been really impressed with with all things Ryan Day. Um, we'll see. I mean, he's you know, we won't really know till the games start until the the 2019 season really plays itself out. But um, thus far, Steve, um, just your thoughts on Ryan Day, and I I couldn't be more impressed so far. Just what are your thoughts on Coach Day so far? I agree. I think uh, what happened this spring was kind of a setback. Uh, seeing Matthew Baldwin kind of walk out the door, his hand-picked guy, that was, I, I think that was uh, kind of a setback, but they came out of it uh, pretty good. They got Gunner, Gunner Hope to uh, transfer from Kentucky, and he's a guy that's got at least a little bit of playing experience. So I think that that's probably a net gain in the uh, short term, at least for this year and next year. And over a four-year period, maybe not so much because Baldwin could have been the starting quarterback at Ohio State perhaps down the line in a few years. But at any rate, that was good. And then to see Kyle McCord uh, from Philadelphia uh, commit to the Buckeyes, a 2021 prospect. You've got Jack Miller uh, in line for 2020. I know it's just one position. It's the quarterback position, which is seemingly the most important position on the field. Uh, I think that they have set themselves up very well for the future at that position. And um, so I think he deserves tremendous credit for that. They're back recruiting Ohio and, and, and really make it a push for the top Ohio guys. And if they can hang on to Paris Johnson in 2020, that'd be a major coup as well. And I'm going to just say I'm not a believer that they have a pad hand or anything, but if they get a few breaks and everything kind of goes their way, uh, there's no reason to, to think that this team can't be right there and winning the Big Ten championship in his first season as the full-time head coach in 2019. So it's certainly within the, the realm of possibility. They're still, in my mind, the team to beat in the Big Ten. And I think the potential is there for uh, Ryan Day to, to kind of make his own way. I mean, if he's able to – 
to step out of Urban Meyer's shadow, win the Big Ten, and get the team into the playoff in his first year, kind of like what Lincoln Riley did, uh, you know, coming out of Bob Stoop's shadow at Oklahoma a couple of years ago, that would be huge. So uh, I think it was kind of funny they were on the set together at the draft down in Nashville, and, and uh, Reese Davis asked uh, Lincoln Riley if he had any advice for Ryan Day. And he just busted out laughing and said, win, you got to win. So Good advice. Know, it always, always comes back to that, Dave. We've got to win those games. And we haven't seen other than the three games he coached early last season. And really, two of them, Rutgers and Oregon State, you or I could have stood there on the sideline and, and, and said, yeah, let's go for it here on fourth and eight. But <laughs> let's not punt today. <laughs> It's like a Madden game. Uh, yeah, we just, just, just go out there and just do whatever we wanted to do and win those. Yeah, games. hell, let's go for it. I so, mean, TCU was a, a legit game because TCU. That was a heck of a game. That was, was a great that was, game. That wasn't TCU that we saw the rest of the season. No. TCU, like, they, they brought their A game. That was their Super Bowl. They were just waiting for that all offseason. So, yeah. and Gary Patterson even talked about that. But uh, And thank goodness, even though it ended up being his last game, at least Ohio State had Nick Bosa for at least part of that game because he was – yeah big part of why they won that game um all right um we're gonna finish the show talking about ohio state basketball recruiting so if you don't care about ohio state basketball recruiting enjoy your monday thanks for tuning into the show um but uh steve you were in fort wayne for the run and slam aau tournament uh, always a big deal um talk about that a little bit and you know specifically i want to get into 2020 ohio state basketball recruiting they have an excellent 2019 class it's enrolling next month i, I assume it is um, ranked about the 10th class in the nation. Just a uh, great class Chris Holtman put together that will be freshman this coming season. But the 2020 class, there's nobody, no commitments yet for Ohio State. Uh, who do you expect might be the first few commits? And just uh, kind of break that down if you would. Well, Dave, they have two spots available right now. Now, interesting development. They had a California potential transfer. Justice Suing is his name, S-E-S-U-E-I-N-G. Kind of an interesting last name. Six seven forward, averaged fourteen points and six rebounds a game at Cal this past year as a sophomore. If he transfers, he would have to sit out the coming season, but would then have two years of eligibility left, and would certainly take one of those two available scholarships. So if that happens, they'd be down to one spot, and uh, they are trying to recruit the board. Basically, they've looked at the top fifty and have tried to pinpoint as many of those guys as possible. They are also debating whether or not they're going to make an offer right now to John Hughley, the uh, uh, outstanding center, 6'9", from Lindhurst, Ohio Brush, out on the east side there in Cleveland. And uh, br uh, since he appeared at the Nike EYBL last week, Hughley got offers from Florida, Florida State, Iowa, uh, Georgia Tech, and a few others uh, came in for him. Cincinnati also offered him as well. So I think that uh, they're going to have a difficult decision. I think that they uh, don't know exactly where things stand with Caleb Wesson, whether he'll be back for one year or the full two years that remain. So that kind of is up in the air. I think they'd like to get two national top 50 players, but at the same time, there could be a pressing need at the post position. And he's starting to show that he's a guy. If he goes to Nike this week in Indianapolis, which I'll be there, if he goes there and he dominates competition, they have to offer him. I don't think they have a choice at that point. So uh, given the fact that, you know, it, it, you know, has Duke offered him yet? No. But there are some pretty good schools on that list that we uh, listed out. Florida, Florida State in particular are, uh, are both pretty good basketball schools. So I think Ohio State's going to have a tough decision there. A couple of younger guys we saw there, Kalen Etzler, his uncle Doug played for Ohio State uh, back in the 90s. Uh, Kalen is a 6'8 wing, very skilled player, and uh, he's a guy, he's a national top 50 guy, actually, in the 2021 class and showed some uh, really good things up there. And one more guy, Malachi Branham, really uh, broke loose. He's a 6'4 combo guard, uh, 2021 prospect from Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, got his team to the, I think, Division One championship game. They lost to Moeller, I think, in the championship and uh, he is a tremendous prospect as well. So we'll see if and when Ohio State comes in on those guys. But one 2020 guy in Ohio that they have offered is Demetrius Michi Johnson from Garfield Heights, about 6'2", shooting guard. 
And uh, he injured his knee at the end of the, the high school season. He was at the event in Fort Wayne, and I talked to him. We're going to have a story on the site. And he said Ohio State is standing 100% by him, backing up that offer, said that, uh, you know, they're with him. It's a long-range injury, though. It's nine months. He will not be back playing basketball till November or December at the earliest. And at that point, we'll see if he's able to overcome the knee injury. And and uh, I think he could be the basis of what would be a four-man class if all the numbers are are together on 2021. That's going to be the next big class that shapes the future for Chris Holtman. But, uh, again, back on Hughley, I think they're facing a tough decision. And yet, they want a, a national impact wing or shooting guard probably in that class as well if they can do it. And uh, I'm going to try and get a hold of that Cal transfer, Justice Suing. We broke the news that he was visiting on Friday, and uh, we're going to try and get an update with him and see where else he's looking. We heard San Diego State, which would be closer to home for him. He's from Hawaii and uh, played his high school senior season at Modern Day High School in Southern California and also Kansas State and potentially Missouri because uh, the coach there, Quanzo Martin, was the guy who recruited him to Cal. So that's a little bit of a, a, a nutshell of what's going on. Uh, I think uh, those are some of the key names, and uh, many more of them will uh, come out this week when we're at uh, Indianapolis for the Nike. Great rundown from Steve Hellwagon, both on the football and basketball fronts. Thank you very much, Steve. And thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land.